Welcome to Tom Versations, a regular conversation with me, your host, Tom Hollingsworth, on a variety of enterprise technical topics. You've no doubt heard a lot about AI and ML in the space for quite a while, actually. And I'm not going to be talking to you today about large language models or any other kind of crazy hardware that's used to feed AI and ML algorithms. I'm the networking nerd. I'm going to be talking to you about networking. I'm going to be talking about all of the ways that people have been building networks to support AI and ML. And in order to do that, I have to talk about how we're doing it today and what the future is going to look like. And if you're familiar with the infamous Bob Metcalf quote, you'll know that we're probably going to call it Ethernet. So let's have a conversation about that. The first thing that we need to talk about is how AI and ML networks trade data between endpoints today. And that's through the use of a protocol called InfiniBand. InfiniBand works differently than traditional TCP IP. So you're probably familiar with the way that Packets are sent through Ethernet back and forth between devices. InfiniBand does something different. First of all, its protocol is not TCP. It's a protocol called Remote Direct Memory Access, or RDMA. Effectively, what RDMA does is it sends the data directly to an end node, bypassing the CPU. Why would it do that? It's because you're trying to get the data into the memory of the system at the end as quickly as possible without introducing any latency or at least the very least amount of latency possible. You're probably asking yourself, why on earth would you want to do that? Well, InfiniBand was originally developed for high performance computing clusters, HPC. And the idea was when you're doing a lot of operations on very large data sets, so-called elephant flows, you want to be able to get the data to the endpoint as quickly as possible without anything in the middle. To that end, InfiniBand is connected through effectively switches, but they are the lowest overhead possible. And they work like a fully switched network. And they have a scaling limitation just like anything else does. Now, who was the original champion of InfiniBand? Well, that would be a company called Mellanox. You've probably seen Mellanox before. They created a lot of host adapters for a lot of different things. How does Mellanox and HPC tie into AI? Well, Mellanox was acquired years ago by NVIDIA. And NVIDIA has championed InfiniBand as the protocol to interconnect large systems. Well, if you've already taken these large systems and you've interconnected them, using InfiniBand, running HPC applications, wouldn't it make sense to extend those to be AI focused? That's effectively what NVIDIA has recommended, is that these large compute clusters that were programmed for InfiniBand are now running AI and ML workloads. I won't lie, InfiniBand works really well for AI and ML workloads. It's because these flows are very large. I said earlier that we call them elephant flows. They are large, very thunderous, and very long-lived. Uh, they are going to go back and forth between systems. Uh, you may only have you know, eight flows for a session, but they're going to be multiple terabytes in size. And latency matters, because in an environment where you have thousands of nodes that are performing calculations, on data, none of those results can be returned until all of the nodes are finished with their computations. So if you're introducing milliseconds of latency or fully seconds of latency on these things as you're doing operations with them, you could cause the entire cluster to effectively stall out. And that's what InfiniBand is trying to fix. It has flow control mechanisms to make sure that the data is going where it's supposed to. It does not do any kind of routing, so it sends the packets directly between the endpoints, and it bypasses the host CPU on the endpoint and sends the data directly into the memory of the device doing the computations, which today is usually a GPU, especially if you're using InfiniBand with NVIDIA systems. If you're thinking to yourself, well, being able to send low latency traffic across a network directly into the host without routing 
sounds an awful lot like Fiber Channel, you're actually not far off because they're both networks that were optimized to send very specific flows with very low latency requirements, and they're both engineered like crazy. Now, I mentioned earlier that InfiniBand does have a scaling limitation, and that's around 48,000 nodes in a given InfiniBand network. If you want to scale past 48,000 nodes, you actually have to add connectors on top of that to be able to get it to scale past that. But in real practical usage, most people keep under 48,000 nodes, and they just run it as a single cluster, and they do things on it. So that's InfiniBand in a nutshell. It's a high-performance, low-latency, non-Ethernet networking system that is designed to move packets back and forth as quickly as possible. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what does this have to do with the future of networking for AI? Well, NVIDIA effectively has a corner on the market for the use of InfiniBand. They own the technology, they license it, they encourage its use in their solutions. And so... People who are building Ethernet switching would really like to break into that market, but they have to overcome some of the inherent challenges that Ethernet has in order to provide for these elephant flows. And so that's what a lot of companies on the market are doing. The two that are really kind of out in front right now are Cisco and Broadcom. They are more alike than they are different. Both of them are trying to change the characteristics of Ethernet operating in a fabric environment in order to make it behave more like InfiniBand. So they are trying to lower the latency of the packets that are being sent into the devices, whether they're doing it through uh, the switches that are on the, you know, the next side of the link from the edge, whether they're doing it through the use of smart NICs, um, so-called DPUs, uh, there's a lot of different ways that they can do it, but effectively what they're trying to do is they're trying to turn that Ethernet fabric into a system that allows them to send packets all over the place, do the work with low latency. So again, we're avoiding the problem that InfiniBand fixes where all of the nodes have to finish their work and send the packets back and forth. And one of the ways that they're doing that is they are effectively changing the way that Ethernet sends packets back and forth. For most of you that are out there that are fans of networking, you know that Ethernet sends a flow of packets to a device, and then when the flow is finished, it closes the TCP connection. But everything goes through that one flow. And as I've talked about many times in the past, people hate the way that TCP works because it was engineered for a much older time on the internet and new systems don't like the way that it has to wait for TCP to basically send all of the traffic. So they're experimenting with ways to do equal cost multipathing, ECMP. Effectively, ECMP works. However, Cisco found out in their testing that basic ECMP really doesn't work well for these kinds of applications because the packets are still getting lost along the way, it's still causing some syncing issues, and you're still losing performance when the systems don't work. In fact, Cisco will even tell you that for single job performance, InfiniBand is still pretty superior. So effectively what Cisco and Broadcom are trying to do in order to alleviate these effective performance gains from InfiniBand is they're using something called packet spraying which is effectively where they're utilizing all the links in a fabric to send all of the packets to get across to the edge as quickly as possible. And I imagine that in my mind's eye, there's just like this water sprinkler that's sending packets into the fabric. And as amusing as that is, I mean, it's not really accurate, but, you know, let's have a little fun with it. This effectively allows Ethernet to increase performance over what InfiniBand can offer. As in, sometimes we're looking on the order of 1.3x improvement. So Ethernet is faster to offset the fact that there are more controls in InfiniBand. And that's not to say that Broadcom and Cisco are not working on creating uh, more flow control in the fabric in order to be able to send these flows where they need to go and make sure that the systems are not being overwhelmed and things like that. They're even working on ways to directly connect into the GPU so that the packets that are being sent into the end node are completely going around any you know system that can introduce a couple of milliseconds of latency. Again, at the level we're talking about, milliseconds versus nanoseconds really does matter. You're probably asking yourself, well, Cisco sells their version of the silicon, which they're calling the G200 currently, 
Broadcom sells their version of the silicon, which they are calling Jericho 3 AI. But they basically do something extremely similar, probably just a little bit different in the technical implementation. Well, who's going to win? Is there going to be a standard? Initially, we weren't sure. But about a month ago, as of this recording, they introduced the Ultra Ethernet Consortium. It is a group of industry vendors, of which Cisco and Broadcom are a part, as well as many other companies, except NVIDIA, of course. And they're all working on standardizing the methods that are going to be used for these AI networking Ethernet enhancements. The value, if you talk to companies like Cisco and Broadcom, is that this is Ethernet. It's familiar. We know how to work on Ethernet. We know how to make it behave. I would argue, going back to that famous Metcalf quote, I don't know what the future of networking is going to look like, but we're going to call it Ethernet. Saying that this is your garden variety gigabit Ethernet that we use to connect desktops and wireless access points is like saying Fiber Channel is effectively customized lossless Ethernet. The proponents of the technology will argue with you until the sun dies out that it is not, even though it really is. These advancements in the Ultra Ethernet Consortium, while they're labeled Ethernet, are not going to behave like Ethernet, chiefly because they're being done in a fabric, which is effectively a group of switches that are acting as one logical network that are connecting to a bunch of devices on the edge nodes. Now, one of the other advantages of using this, of course, is that as you're building this fabric, you can add additional nodes. Um, you can scale well over 48,000 edge nodes. And because of the spine leaf architecture that you get together, you can actually build out even further beyond that without the need to introduce a whole lot of complex routing overhead. Uh, currently, Cisco's implementation scales higher with fewer number of switches, but only for systems that are utilizing about 100 gigabits per second of throughput. When you look at the Radix, which is the, the chipset uh, layouts and things like that, um, Cisco can do 512 at 100 gigabits per second, and NVIDIA can do... Uh, 256 at 200 gigabits per second before they have to start adding extra things on. And the math it works out in the linked articles that I'm going to share to show you exactly why the networks scale as big as they do for the throughput that they have. What does the future look like? Well, NVIDIA is going to keep pushing InfiniBand as long as they can because it is a stable, mature technology. And because they own it, they're going to use it as much as possible. Just It happened to be that we went from HPC to AI, so they're going to continue to use it. That's not to say that NVIDIA is not looking at Ethernet. They are, in fact, going to be developing a version of Ethernet to run these AI and ML workloads. But reports say that they're going to be customizing it around the use of their Bluefield DPUs, which does make me wonder, are all of the advancements that NVIDIA is going to be putting in to their Ethernet going to require a DPU in the system to do all that fancy offload stuff. To their credit, in a recent presentation at Networking Field Day, I asked Broadcom if their Ethernet enhancements were going to require the use of Broadcom smart NICs on servers, and they said no. They're going to be doing it in their switching infrastructure. And based on the reports that I've seen, Cisco is going to be doing the same thing. Given both of these companies are signatories to the Ultra Ethernet Alliance, I believe that they're going to try to enhance Ethernet in the network itself and not on the edge nodes with DPUs. Can it take advantage of a DPU? Absolutely. That's the only reason that we build those things, is to be able to offload Ethernet processing away from the main CPU. But I don't think that the secret sauce of making AI and ML networking run any faster is going to be specifically contained to a DPU. So ultimately, the question is, if you're building out an AI and ML network today, what should you do? Well, you don't really have a whole lot of options. If you're building on NVIDIA's platform, NVIDIA is probably going to tell you that you're going to need to use InfiniBand to get to a certain performance profile. And if that's the case, you can't go wrong with it. But I don't know how much of a future there is in InfiniBand. Just like with Fiber Channel, it's a customized transport network, you're at the mercy of when they decide to make it go faster or add additional features to it. 
if you are looking at an environment that gives you some flexibility, it's definitely worth looking at what you can get from a company like Cisco or Broadcom because we're using Ethernet, so these systems will effectively be cheaper. But remember that on the order that we're looking at, that cheaper is a few million dollars difference on a very expensive piece of hardware. So you're going to have to run the numbers and decide if that's important to you. And if it is, ask the right questions, investigate what's going on. And honestly, if you're talking to Cisco and Broadcom, get confirmation from them that the feature sets that are important to you are going to be uh, introduced and codified in the Ultra Ethernet Alliance so that it will not be a situation where you're running on a revision of hardware that is not capable of moving forward. Ultimately, the reason to pick Ethernet over InfiniBand is for that future proofing. You want to make sure that you're not running on a one-off custom network for the rest of your life. Anybody who's still running on ArcNet, and yes, there are people who are, will tell you how important it is to not be left with some kind of you know, has-been technology. Not that InfiniBand ever will be a has-been technology, but I think that the future lays more in Ethernet, and that's coming from someone who's worked with networking their whole life. Thank you very much for tuning in for this episode of Conversations. I always appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about some of these cool technologies and get under the hood about how they work. I hope this has kind of clarified how InfiniBand works versus how Ethernet works and how companies are trying to make Ethernet look more like InfiniBand for this single job performance and maybe capture a little bit of that market. You can always find great conversations like this on our website at gestaltit.com, along with all the other great things we do, such as the Checksum, our on-premise IT podcast, and many other great things. I should be back soon with another episode. Until then, take care of yourself and keep an eye on the future.